Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I want to actually focus more on strings because there's more to it than, than just what I've showed you. And one of the big pains, if we look at this original file that we created where we were trying to write out all this HTML, we tried to put it all in the one line. So as you can see, like the editor has a hard time re reading all that stuff. And there's another alternative that we can do and actually uh, to make this much more readable. So I want to show you about the uh, multi-line string in Python. And what you do is you use actual three, uh, three single apostrophes. And I can actually remove the double quote at the end and do three apostrophes as well. And that is, um, is enough to close off the statement. So this is actually called the delimiter. So if you ever were interested in the proper term, it's uh, delimiter. But now the interesting thing is that you don't have to use a single apostrophe. You could actually use double quotes and use three of them. Uh, but the, the convention is that you'll see people use three of the apostrophes. So the major benefit of this is that you don't have to put your string on one line. So now I can actually structure this like an HTML page. And I should be able to like reason about it a little bit easier as well. So if you've ever seen HTML, this looks much closer to what you would end up uh, would end up seeing here. So I can even have the indentation and everything uh, by writing it this way. And we're going to get rid of this uh, this link that bores me now. And We'll just say testing. I want to change the title so we know that we did change something. And yeah, that, that's good. So let's go ahead and, uh, and run this program again. Another thing that, that people had pointed out as well is that if we go into our VS code and go into the launch JSON, and we're going to actually want it to say, um, We changed this stop on entry here and we're going to change this to false. So a big shout out to the people that mentioned that in the comment. And there was more than one and I don't have their name in front of me and I'm sorry. We completely mess up my train of thought and everything uh, to, to stop what I'm doing and try to find out who recommended that. But a big thank you. Uh, they did mention that. I actually thought it was a bug because I don't remember that ever being the case when uh, I first started using VS Code, and then all of a sudden it started doing that. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and go to our debugger just to see. Um, we'll notice that it doesn't actually stop. If we put a breakpoint like down here, you can see it's not stopping on line one anymore. So that's good. All right, so um, let's check out the output of this file, though, just to make sure that it did write all this HTML like it did in the last video. Now, um, and one other thing too, when we created this HTML write statement, it's actually a good idea to explicitly, which just means like spell it out and, and do it, um, to explicitly close the actual open file that you have. Because depending on the operating system you're running with, especially with Windows, you can run into problems there. So um, let's make sure we're running close and then open and close parenthesis because uh, that is actually an available method that's on our uh, file our file abilities within Python. So to read files or, or to write files. All right, so let's open this up. And we can see that we get the exact same output. You can see, look at this. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, I was gonna say, did I change it to look at this? Okay, so yeah, we changed it to look at this. At first I, I put testing, so anyway. Sorry guys, getting a little bit discombobulated here uh, all right so that is the the multi-line string and that's why I mean it's much much easier to reason about something like this um, you can do the same thing with uh, like concatenation so if you need to add something like uh, here's our time in fact let's just make this a string so we'll say another string equals testing all right and if I needed to add it here I could say plus testing plus and then another triple quote so you can do the exact same thing like we saw where we add variables into our strings and com converge them together uh, by doing that. So I'm not going to run that again. You guys can run that if you want, uh, but it shouldn't be necessary. The other string thing that I wanted to focus on before we move on, because 
if we don't actually concentrate on this stuff now and, and at least see it and run through it, then um, there's going to be a time where, where you're going to see it and you're going to just be like, what the hell is that? Like, what is it doing? Why, why is it doing that? Why didn't Chris cover this in his tutorial? All right, so what we're going to do is um, reference another method of uh, building strings within Python that you're going to see, and it's going to throw you through a loop every once in a while when you see this. But some people like to do it this way. They find it cleaner to say, okay, percent, or I'm sorry, double quote for your string, and then I'm going to say percent sign s, and this signifies a string placeholder. So um, I'll just, let me try, let me... All right, and we're going to change another string. We'll just call this, we're going to create a variable named animal, call it cat. And then inside the uh, this, this statement here, what I'm going to do is actually do a space and then a percent sign, and then it, it's followed by the actual argument of the variable. So uh, whatever variable you pass in, it will, it will actually take the value of animal, which we know equals cat, and it's going to assign it to this placeholder here. So let's go ahead and watch what happens. And you'll notice down in the, the debug console, it says cat ran over the hill. So Python, by doing it this way, knows that, okay, I have this animal variable. I'm going to find the first placeholder and replace it with the value of, of animal. Now, the thing is, is you can have more than one placeholder. You could actually have hundreds of placeholders it, it wouldn't be very feasible. Usually you don't see this with more than maybe three or four. Uh, but you can have multiples that you just inject right into the placeholder. So I do want to cover that. I feel like that was a, a pretty important um, concept. Another thing, too, that I'm not sure I ever touched upon in my previous videos, but we know that variable names can't have numbers on the front. But just so you know, you can have numbers in your variable name. They just can't lead. They can't lead with numbers. That's not valid. So if you want to play around, you might want to play around with uh, just testing some of the, the different things that you can do. Another thing, too, that's um, I know you can do it in, in uh, JavaScript. It would be interesting if you could do it here. I'm going to try to do a special character, Alt-0233, and that does this hyphen. Yeah, it looks like that will actually accept it. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Um, you want to stick to just the ASCII characters. That's um, like don't make you know, some fancy little... Unicode symbol be your new alias for your new JavaScript replica or jQuery replica. Uh, basically, just don't do that. All right, guys, so this is going to cover uh, the rest of really what I want to talk about in strings. Um, who knows? There might be other things that I can think of along the way, but I just want to make sure we uh, have our bases covered before we move too far into this series. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thank you for all the, the viewers, and please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.